Yeah, here at OSMPTXReviews.com, we're just giving you a very quick video review of the LG Expo. This is a smartphone that runs Windows Mobile, so it's a little bit of an older platform, but it's been impacted by LG, and it's for AT&T service. It's a very interesting smartphone because it has a built-in projector into it, just like the Samsung Beam, so it's one of the first, it is the first smartphone in the U.S. to have a built-in Pico projector that is exclusive to the device, and it fits into the back cover instead of the battery plate, and it allows the device to project an image onto a wall or ceiling up to 50 inches. So it's a very large image, it's also very bright, and quite good resolution, and it's produced by Texas Instruments for the vehicle projecting technology. The phone itself is pretty normal in terms of specs, but it does have that 1 gigahertz Snapdragon processor, so it is also is pretty speedy. Um, in addition, it has a biometric fingerprint reader on the front of the device. It also dubs as a tra optical trackpad, which allows you to navigate the device left, right, up, and down, and it can also press down to click. So you can decide to unlock the device by using a great security sensor. The device also has concurved edges, a little bit. Um, not too much, more of a design standpoint. And it also has a full slide out QWERTY keyboard. It's a four row QWERTY keyboard that's easy to use to text and message on. So if you're doing a lot of work with documents or a lot of emailing or web browsing, this keyboard is really going to be appreciative by you. On the back of the device, you have access to a 5.0 megapixel camera. It also has a full LED flash for sensing. There's your stereo speakers. And on the back, the metal plate. This is actually a full metal plate. So it feels really nice in the hand. It's not made out of plastic. It feels really good. Another interesting standpoint by LG is that they've decided to go with a proprietary UI on top of on Windows Mobile. It's called the LG S-Class 3D Interface. I really, really am a fan of this UI because it's a lot easier than Windows Mobile 6.5. Um, in addition, it's the same UI you see on smartphones like the LG Crystal and the LG Arena, and it's intuitive. It's easy to use. It uses accelerometers to tilt the device. It has a 3D sliding cube for multiple home screens, a lot of apps. I'm going to show you that in a second. Another interesting thing, this device doesn't have a built-in stylus slot, so LG has decided to go with what they call a lipstick stylus. Not a huge fan of this, obviously, but still, you basically pull the stylus apart to access the point, like so, and then you can tap on the screen. The stylus is quite large, but it's just a little bit awkward to pull it in and out in terms of looks and design. It also bangs across the phone quite a lot, so you get a little bit more scratching, because, um, Let's close it. It bangs across the phone when you're moving, so not quite good for the durability factor, I guess. In terms of hardware and specs, on the left-hand side we have access to a volume rocker. It's very large and easy to use. On the top we have access to a uh, headphone and uh, also charging jack. It's a um, regular micro USB 2.0 port. Uh, unfortunately, it means there's no 3.5 mm headphone jack on this device. We also have an on-off key on the side. And then on the right hand side, we have access to a, a micro SD card slot for more movies and expansion of memory. We also have a multitasking key to bring up all your currently running applications. On the bottom is a shutter key to take pictures. And that's pretty much it. So let's check out, turn on the device and see how to, we are going to use it. The first thing to ask is for me to slide my finger to unlock. So if I do that, it's going to say thank you and it's going to unlock for and you will notice that the screen itself, which is actually only 3.2 inches, is on the smaller side of smartphones. Without sight, it's bright and vibrant and readable in most conditions and even under direct sunlight. So it's a great display overall. We just wish it was capacitive instead of resistive. Now this is basically what the 3G um, interface is called. Uh, you can basically navigate. This is your home screen. I can slide um, to the right to access my favorite multimedia content. I can slide again to access my favorite contacts. And then I can add widgets basically into the screen and then browse around and widget, um, visit them. Now on the bottom of all the screens that doesn't really change are a row of different applications I can scroll through that are popular on my device. So basically there's shortcuts into popular different applications. Um, for example, there's calendar, weather widget, and LG menu. I also have GPS, um, entertainment shortcuts. I have multimedia shortcuts, Internet Explorer, favorite multimedia stuff. And then um, perhaps the biggest little icon you want to keep is the LG menu, which after you press, will bring up your list of all your different applications, like so. And then you can navigate through these by sliding left and right for more content. And then you can also 
tilt the phone to access the whole list of features. So it's a pretty cool and pretty slick UI that I'm pretty happy. It's not as customizable and not as user-friendly, I guess, as um, HTC's, uh, uh, three, uh, HTC's um, interface that they put on top of Windows Mobile, but it still is effective in terms of covering um, a lot more touch-friendliness and LG also goes deeper than this. A lot of applications like the calculator and stuff are also optimized by LG to have large letters that work really well with your finger and not with the stylus. It's a good point. And pressing start on the top still brings you to the traditional Windows 6.5 um, home screen or start screen, if I may. Uh, it brings you with these... Oh, I'm going to have to unlock this again. It brings you basically to... Uh, your regular features. Now, a problem with LG, LG 3S, the 3D um, interface is that it doesn't incorporate apps that you download after the initial boot up of the phone. So, for example, if I download an Opera Mini, Opera Mobile 10 into this handset, I'm not going to be able to add that into the actual um, SD interface. It's going to be part of the Windows uh, Windows um, original software. So, it's something that's locked into the handset. I can't add into that that touchy interface, which is an unfortunate. But overall, it works pretty well, and the touchscreen is rather sensitive. It isn't too bad for a resistive, so if you were worried about that, I think you'll be satisfied with this handset. So let's take a look at some more features by exiting out of that. Um, on the top of here, we have access to all your different phone features and turning on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and we can also drag the menu up for wireless messenger, flight mode, um, your passwords, and how to use the S-Class UI. There's a little video for that. I can turn Wi-Fi on and quickly get into a uh, Wi-Fi network. Now this is actually um, in the U.S. It's it's other than the HDC HD2. This is the only phone in the U.S. and it's actually the first to come out with a one gigahertz Snapdragon processor on Windows Mobile. So it's actually the fastest uh, Windows experience you can get for Windows Mobile. So if you're looking for that, this is definitely speedy. It definitely was a lot quicker than what I expected from a Windows mobile device um, in general. So everything ran without a hiccup at all. I never saw the repeatedly spinning Windows dots, so it's it's fast if you want that. So if it's hooked up to Wi-Fi right now, I can also use on 3G with AT&T, of course. It's a quad-band GSM welcome. So let's browse the web. Let's go to Start, and let's go down to Opera Mobile 10. There we go, we're loaded. If we want to go to a site, like, let's just go to BBC News and see what happens. Uh, I'm a little low on Wi-Fi right now, so not exactly the fastest connection. That's going to uh, load a little bit quicker, uh, slower, but there we go. You basically get the idea. It loads pretty nicely. Um, of course, I would re we would recommend Opera Mobile over the Internet Explorer because it's just a better experience and a faster experience overall. But there you go. You can look at top stories. Oh, I accidentally pressed that again. I can look at top stories and uh, browse easily and flow through the text um, in a nice way. I can also tilt the phone by sliding out the keyboard again or, or using an accelerometer and it will orientate properly. Now let's try using the keyboard and see how that actually works. Pressing the Google, we can say the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So you can see that it's pretty accurate. There's a few errors in there, but overall this keyboard is also very easy to use. It's tactile and risen above the surface. Maybe not as good as the HTC Tilt 2s, but it is a strong keyboard with large letters that you will be able to use. Your fingers will, you know, take up a lot of room on the keyboard because the keys are huge. So it is comfortable to type on and overall very tactile and enjoyable to use. So that's the web browsing. The web browsing experience is pretty satisfactory. It's fast, pages load. You also can play YouTube videos directly on this device without having to download a YouTube app. That's right, a lot of devices actually stutter and won't work with YouTube Mobile out of the box, but the LG Expo is one of those phones that it works. After you play a video on using Internet Explorer or, or uh, Opera and Mobile, it will actually link you to a, um, a live stream inside of uh, when inside of um, Windows Media Player and start playing. And actually, it's pretty high resolution, too, for, for YouTube video playback. So that's also something that you can get in the box. So more different applications. Gmail, of course, it's everything you'd expect. Um, I'm going to show you the virtual keyboard here in a second. But there's 
some photo gallery you can go through, and some music. For games, you basically have a few Bitcoin games, and I've also downloaded a few to see how it works. Of course, you got that favorite bubble breaker for uh, from Windows Mobile, but there's also some some other games, for example, Ferrari GT, that um, are fun to play with. If I press that one more time, and I try press resume, there's the volume turned up. I'm going to press down the volume. There we go. And resume. There we go. You can see that right now I'm playing this, and I'm using, uh, you can also use the buttons on the bottom here to navigate your car left and right. It's very easy to use, um, and I'm not sure if it just has tilt on it. I think it kind of has tilt. So you can also play around with this game. Um, quite easy to use. Again, touch screen isn't huge the problem. And you can see, most importantly, the graphics don't lag at all. The graphics are sharp, and they are responsive. So it's great for gaming if that's your thing. And it runs multiple applications. Pressing that multitasking key, we can see it running all of these different things, and it doesn't have a single problem yet. So let's exit out of some of these, including the Opera Mobile. Oh, there we go. And let's go hop back in into the LG menu and see what we can do. So other goodies have an FM radio built in if you want that kind of thing. We also have some My Casper Weather Widget and a Wikipedia app that allows us to search your web for a quick multimedia and Wikipedia searches. Um, let's go into the camera now and see how the camera is. Again, the camera is actually fairly decent on this device. It's one of the sharper cameras for a 5 megapixel that I've seen recently. It's sharp and actually focuses into subjects really well. Um, and also the, the LED flash comes in handy in darker conditions. But most importantly, the camera's ability to focus is something that I've really enjoyed. Um, let's just take a picture of my hands right now, but you can kind of get the idea. Focus, now click down. And there we go, we have our image. It's very good, the camera isn't doing this justice, the screen's a little bit too bright, but um, you get the idea, it's a very good camera, and shutter speed is very acceptable. You can use this, I can send this via Bluetooth, or email, or MMS, or HD Snapshot, which is another feature that this device has. So you can search it, you can send it via a variety of different um, applications, or I can delete it, like I'm doing now, and it's done. Again, LG has done some work with the UI, so the buttons and things are all super large and easy to see, so it's another feature that this device does well. So overall, multimedia is also a great experience on this phone. Um, the screen is vibrant, you can watch videos without a stutter, and thanks to the fast processor, um, and also you can view songs and listen to music quite well with the loudspeaker. Um, again, a great, uh, a great uh, critique we have for this device is the lack of a 3.5mm headphone jack, and you have to get a split dock adapter that actually plugs in via a micro USB, and then it goes out via 3.5mm headphone jack. But it's a small, thing, a small price to pay for, I guess, a better experience overall. So other um, anemones that you get with this device include an alarm clock. You have, of course, you have AT&T Navigator on here for turn-by-turn -turn directions. There's your calculator. Um, again, this has been reworked by LG. So again, the, L the accelerometer is very fast. Uh, the buttons are all large. This is what you would see from an LG feature phone. Um, it's been placed directly into the smartphone, so the buttons are all super huge. And pressing the sign button brings up, of course, more options. So LG has done a great job with that. And again, here's your contacts list, and you will see how large all the buttons are. Um, I keep on pressing that. That is because of the weird angle I'm doing this review at. I apologize for that. But this is actually not a problem I usually have with this phone. Um, anyways, you can browse through your contacts without an issue, and you can see that all the buttons and all the layouts are super large, the icons. You can send email, um, write MMS, let's write an MMS right now, or instant message, which you can search by having a connection to the web, either using that GSM connection or that Wi-Fi. Um, so let's try menu new, MMS, and it's going to come up, and there's your virtual keyboard. The virtual keyboard isn't as good as a uh, hardware keyboard that's provided on this device, but it still is usable. The buttons are large, it's kind of like HDCs, it's, it's pretty sensitive, but uh, you do need to peck a little bit more with your fingernails rather than using your flesh. So you do need to get, get, get uh, used to that. Um, of course, I would 
rather use the physical keyboard. I mean, that's the reason why this is built in. But still, you have that option, which is kind of nice in case you want to do something on screen and don't want to flip the phone open. So any last-minute features that I've missed out, you also have, I guess, stopwatch and a tip calculator on here to do all your compensation, and you also have a full document suite viewer for PowerPoint, Excel, and Word, Excel. You can also set your settings to touch fingerprint. You also have a, uh, a screen output and the T9 for the keyboard and the home screen layout. And most importantly, you can also adjust um, the proximity sensor, and it also has haptic feedback, so you can adjust if you want to turn that on or off. So if I'm touching something on the screen, the phone actually vibrates. It's kind of like I'm touching a real button. But if you don't want that feature and you want to conserve electricity, you can turn that feature off. It's a pretty cool feature, though. And, yeah, it's pretty much everything, I guess, in terms of um, features on this device. Uh, there's your Windows Media Player. In terms of Office, Mobile, Documents, you can view all those. But it's just kind of standard with all Windows devices. And that's pretty much it. It's a great smartphone, as a smartphone as it is. It's fast. It's responsive. It's stylish. Um, it's, yeah, it's the top-of-line Windows Mobile device that was released a few years ago, so if you're still interested in something like this, especially for a work solution in the office as a productivity road tool, um, the LG Expo should meet your expectations. Um, so thanks for watching this part one video review. In part two, we will show you the, the Pico projector and how the video looks projected onto a large screen display. Here at OS VT VTX 